On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. Heath Oaks is a millennial mogul whose ignorance on fire led him to fail his way to success. Jenny Anchando is an Emmy award-winning journalist whose sharp eye and biting wit have led to her storied career in television. Together, they tackle today's headlines in a way only an odd couple with a dash of perfect opposite can. So kick back, relax, and join the conversation. This is Second Shot with your hosts, Heath and Jenny. Plot twist, Keith is not here today. I have taken over the studio, <laughs> totally <laughs> taken control. Good to see you, everybody uh, You know who, who's watching online or on YouTube. Uh, good to chat with you, everybody who's actually listening on the podcast. Welcome in to Zach and Matt. Hello, guys. Hey. Hey, hello. How are you? That was so vivacious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, oh, my gosh. That was like the Brighton. Yeah. Excited. To, yeah. I'm excited <laughs> yeah. to be here. Now, we also have a new face here with us today, Miranda Kirk. Hello. Hello. Doing her first podcast ever. Ever. Yep. First podcast ever. I'm excited about this. I'm excited too. So let me tell you guys a little bit. And and I've been like, oh gosh, so many of my girlfriends have been excited as I've been sort of teasing ahead to this episode because this is a topic so many of them have recently gotten into. So let me tell about Miranda's background. Um, She went through the Coaching Mastery Certificate Program, which is approved by the International Coaching Federation. She is a wife, a mom of three, a former teacher who has essentially found this passion for helping people to find the best relationships relationships possible. And so what she did was she went through the Coaching with the Enneagram Certificate Program, which is also, by the way, approved by the International Coaching Federation. So yes, today we are talking about the Enneagram. Yeah. So Zach and Matt, I'm curious if you guys had heard about this this quiz, this test, this way of thinking uh, prior to us bringing this up for the show. Um, I, I mean, I've certainly heard of uh, different types of personality tests. Yeah. Um, and I think I've heard this word before, but I guess I thought I associated it with something else. Um, Because when I started looking at it, this was different than what something I had seen prior. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the I'm in the same boat. I want to say I've heard of Enneagram, but like I like hook me up to lie detector. I probably haven't. (laughs) Like I want to be smart and be like, yeah, but like no, I I don't think so. But Uh, it sounds cool. Okay, so Miranda, so so what is the Enneagram? Okay, so the Enneagram is a personality typing tool that has nine types. It basically says that every person is one of these nine types. So you start as this type and you are you are this type for the duration of your life. Okay, so no matter how much coaching you get or how much self-development you get, you're still at your core, the one type that yes, you're born with. Yes, like underneath you're still driven by the same things. Okay, so our goal with this show, and you guys know, is typically on Second Shot, we do the headlines, we take the second shot at them, we try to pull a life lesson, something motivational, something inspirational out of it. And so we wanted to do something a little bit different today, just with having Miranda on, so that we could talk about what this is, and, and hopefully, sort of, it can help your personal development journey. Because that really is a lot of, like, our, our listeners, we see it in the group, like, we've got that private Facebook group, and so many of them... Yeah are posting about, you know, they're just trying to like up level their game, right? Mm-hmm. They're just trying to be their best. Sure. So I'm hoping that this, and this is something, Heath and I both did like an online version of this quiz. Right. And we both came out as twos. Twos, yeah. <laughs> and it turns out neither one of you are twos. So something to be said about that is the online tests are a great starting place, but they're only about 60% accurate. So the best way to find your type is to read and relate and discover along the way And the benefit of that is you have to read about all nine to get the best understanding of your type, which then in turn helps you to relate to other people because you have an understanding of all nine. Okay. Yeah, definitely when I was looking at it, I found myself being drawn to a couple of different ones. I'm sure that's probably normal. Yeah. Like this one sounds a lot like me, but this one also sounds a little like me. Um, You know, and I've found value in the past of, of those other personality 
test that kind of combined things and like, well, you're sort of this and you're sort of that. Right. So this one's interesting in that it's saying these are the nine different personality types and you are mostly going to be one of these nine and not like a big mixture or something. No, like that. You, that you, you are only going to be yeah. one. Yeah. But then what's the wings? Is that like a rising so, sign in astrology? Hold on, well, wings. Yeah. Well, yeah. So when you look at the <laughs> when you look at the nine types, so the two type, the two numbers that neighbor your type, you can pull from those strongly. Oh. And so, um, like for myself, I'm in type eight, okay. and I pull strongly from a nine wing, and you can kind of figure that out just based on you know learning about yourself. And what's really cool is because the enneagram is pretty deep. Like it goes way beyond just external behaviors. It goes more to like thoughts and feelings and drivers. Okay. And so what's really cool is you can figure that stuff out without having to come up with the words for it. Like you just read it and you just, it zings you. You're like, that's me. And it's things you didn't even realize about yourself, but are so helpful to know. But it's not like you have to come up with it. Like, tell me about yourself. You'd never be able just to come like, up with it. I'm just, I'm a two nothing else needs to be said or whatever yeah. like whatever your number well, yeah. is like but on I mean, dating profiles yeah. like in 10 years well that's true yeah when we, everybody's aware of it yeah. we should explain that to the poor folks at home who are wondering what twos and fours and nines and what all that like what what hold on let's let's give people like yeah, a, can we a, a go case through study the, yeah what what are they exactly we kind of go through okay. the type yeah. okay yeah so there's nine nine types yep there's nine types so the one is called the perfectionist okay it is um and this is just a very general you know, there's so much more to them what I'm saying, but so the one is a perfectionist. This is a right, wrong way of seeing the world. Um, so the challenge for the one is to, you, you know, learn to be good, that you can be good without being perfect and that oh, okay. things don't have to be perfect to be good. Right. They nicknamed this one the teacher. Yeah. Right? So that's the challenge of the one. And, and it's, it's a complex system. There's different types within the types. It's a lot, but for the, for the general basis, right. the one is a perfectionist. The two is called the helper. And so the two um, loves to be in tune to other people's needs. Mm -hmm. And all of these types, if you're doing them in excess, so if you don't have a lot of self-awareness, then you're going to be doing these in overdrive. So that means it's going to be costing you something. So there are great things to be said about all these different types. But if you're doing them in excess, it's costing you something. And anybody at home is one of these types. We're making that clear. Like, yeah, everybody, everybody falls is into one, one of these nines. One. Yes. So, so for the example, twos, the, the helper is, um, so their challenge is mm -hmm. realizing that they have needs of their own and to, to cause they avoid their own needs by helping other people. They overextend. Yes. Okay. They overextend. All right. But then the strengths, it's like empathetic, supportive, oh, it's motivating, one, yes. warm. Right. This is the one, by the way, you guys, um, I love Heath, that you found the strength. Heath and yeah. I, well, because I thought I was a two. I know. Um, <laughs> or you just um, went to the positive yeah, side. Yeah, or just yeah. went to the positive because she's trying to identify me as maybe the We're still working on Jenny's we're gonna type. get on with. <gasps> you guys know my mom. Okay. You All know, right. she's just busting up trying to call in when we're trying to podcast. Get in on this show. This is not a live call-in show. Shout out right. to your mom. Mom, yeah. mom, stop. You had yeah. your episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, chill. I'm doing it again sometimes. So then um, type three, on, I'm looking through the app. It calls it the performer, but maybe there's another... Yeah, the performer is okay. a great word for the three, yeah. So they are the ones who um, are super, super driven to perform, meaning uh, be productive, have success. And for them, the driver is identity, you know, how they look to others and they want to. So the challenge for the three is to um, figure out who they really are and be okay with that. And, and you can still be successful without being a chameleon and trying to fit into every situation of your life. Comfort okay. in your own skin. Yeah, yeah so three. this is the one, well, Heath's not here, but I think he'd be okay with me saying, we think that he is this. The de his, his development areas, let's go ahead and call him out. <laughs> Competitive, <laughs> abrupt, overly focused, and selectively honest, dun dun dun. Yeah. Um, but but it's, I think I think what's interesting about this and the reason why I'm I'm so like wanting to suck up the knowledge is because um, the point that you made about being able to relate better to people if you know what Very their much. type is yeah totally you can understand where they're coming from and instead of stopping short at a behavior you see you can go beyond that and say I understand why they feel the need to do this how can I support them in this right right being able to understand the drive right. behind somebody else yes. can help you. Because if we stop short at behaviors, then we're not, I mean, it's going to be what really hard to truly enjoy people because you stop short at their behavior. So I was thinking I was the performer because I am very competitive in career type mm -hmm. stuff, but not so much with home. 
stuff. Um, so, and you know, I think some of the strengths are maybe me, and I think I can definitely be over focused. And at work, I can be abrupt. Like people who know me in a super specific, high intensity news work environment, <laughs> I think it would be like, oh, she's an obvious three. But I think my girlfriends would see n none of that. So I don't know. We'll we'll keep going yeah, down the list. Yeah, we still don't know. We still don't know. So okay. um, so type four. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 app calls it the unique one. Yes. So fours desire to be different and unique, and they are the type that experiences the most feelings. So a lot of types don't know how to access their feelings, but the four is very good at that. And so they access their feelings um, a lot, which is you know of course the challenge for the four would be to not take on you know, things at face value, but to find who you are and not, you know, if someone says you're this, you don't just believe it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because it, it mentions development areas being self-conscious. Yes. So you might take what somebody says and really, really take it to heart. Yeah, like a four would struggle with having a filter to separate things coming in from the world. They would just hear something and think, well, they, they think that about me, so that's, that, that's, that's me. That's it. Right. Okay, so this could be me. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I might be wrong, but I fancied myself um, a four. I was yeah. like, I think I might be Guilt a four. Ridden? I, I, I work in podcasting and I'm wearing a pink shirt. So if that doesn't make me unique. <laughs> you I'm are the unique time. one. Um, the strengths of the four, it says inspiring, creative, introspective, expressive, um, but development areas intense. Oh my gosh, maybe am I a four? <gasps> Coach Miranda says she doesn't ever really, like she lets people kind of discover it themselves. Um, okay, so number five, the expert. Yes, so these are the information collectors. So they want knowledge that's how they find their value is through knowing things and um you know getting into conversations that way so if like if a five isn't speaking up that means they don't have enough knowledge collected on that topic yet and they so their challenges be, would be to connect with the world in front of them and not be in their head so much with okay. you know knowing things and relying on information for value and, and uh, they can tend to underemphasize relationships yes. because of disconnect that being so yeah. in their head. Yeah. Okay, are any of these jumping out to you yet, Matt? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I was looking at the uh, the app that uh, we had here, and I was initially, through my initial assessment, drawn to uh, the type two. Okay. But I also feel, I mean, like 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 she said, I feel parts of you know the the ones around it as well. So I think it's probably pretty close, but. I think I probably need to spend a little bit more time looking into it and reading some. I, I find it hard because, you know, I, I think probably anybody does this when they look at it. They look at all the positives and say, yeah, that sounds exactly like me. Um, y you know, you only see you, you're trying to right. self-select <laughs> yeah. like what sounds what like a I really good. Be? Yeah, yeah, what do yes. I want to be? Um, so I need to spend a little bit more time, I think, reading deeper into it just to see for sure. But I am, I think, mostly like right now, pretty drawn to the type two, it sounds like. Well, and isn't that true, Miranda? I think that it's almost like in order to find out your real type, you have to be super honest with yourself. You do. And and you can, and honestly, you can read all nine, and we all relate in some way to all nine. Okay. But when I say driving force, that means like when you're under a squeeze, when you're under pressure, when you're in a conflict, you know, what triggers you from deep, deep down inside, and what are you really after based on what you're what you're putting out there okay 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 that's good you guys we have to be real with ourselves or otherwise it's not gonna work so let's talk about type number six the questioner Ooh. yes so this is the most complex type of oh. the enneagram and they are um kind of worst case scenario types and so <laughs> this is Whoa. the one Heath said yeah, I was. That's, that yeah, worst really case negative. scenario. So Hold my on. son, my son is a six, uh -huh. and he. Um, but yeah, they can think of the worst case scenario, but they don't consider themselves negative or glass half empty. They just consider themselves a realist. So these are the ones that are like in the control tower, running things at the airport, because they're going to think okay. of every possibility that could possibly happen, and they're going to have a solution for it. Are these the people with like twenty thousand MREs in their basement, <laughs> like those meals ready to eat? Is that what those are called? <laughs> Emergency like they could preppers. Be, like they yeah. could be. Yeah. Doomsday. They could be, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like they've got every last thing. Or like, you, like you go on a one night camping trip and they have the entire mm -hmm. you know minivan oh, sure. full with stuff. Every yeah. episode of Second Shot downloaded, ready yes, for the right. apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But the good things about the six: loyal, collaborative, persevering, anticipate problems. Yeah. So they're called like the loyalists. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Hmm. 
So, okay, the seven, the energizer. What's uh, what's the deal with the sevens? So the sevens are, to me, in my opinion, they're the most easily identified of all of them, just from external, mm -hmm. because they are all about stimulation. So the sevens are fun and they're excited and like the main thing they do is reframing. So they can find, they can take any situation and they're the ones that are gonna say, but you know, the positive side is, or if you really look at it, you could say that we could get something good out of this or something good might come about this. And so they can find something positive for every situation. So this is the one you were saying that I might be. I've noticed that you ha you can find it. You go to the positive way more than, than um, the negative. So Silver we were talking about you guys, if you guys know me from way back in the day, you know that for 10 years I got up at two in the morning and so Miranda was like, you know, um, so that must have been hard. And I'm like, oh yeah, but. I'd do it again, it's great, it was fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it was. Yeah. But I'm trying to figure out if that's an isolated situation where I loved my career or if it's like, because on a, like, let's be real, who likes getting up at two in the morning? Zero people. Right. He said it's maybe babies. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm still investigating that. You guys stand by to find out if I'm a seven. We'll figure um, it out. Type eight. Type eight, so I am a type eight. Um, type eight's called the challenger. And so the type eight is um, the one that's in the room that carries a high energy. A lot of times they're told they're intimidating growing up. They um, are the ones that feel the need to be strong and protect. And, okay. and they're big on justice and protection. Okay. And so the challenge for the eight is to be weak and vulnerable because we have needs just like everyone, but we don't want to be exposed as weak because someone might need us down the line and we have to be seen as strong enough to be there for them. That's a hard, that's a gosh. I have empathy for you living in that, <laughs> you know, with, with that psyche. Okay, so is this something that, that you, Miranda Kirk, were born as an eight, or did you develop that because of your life experiences? Okay, so when you read about the Enneagram, you're gonna see the childhood wound is what they call it. And this is something that you perceived in your childhood that triggered your number to go into effect. And so I would guess that you could argue nature versus nurture type thing that, oh, you know, it develops based on something that happens. My personal belief is that you're born the way that you, with your number and that no matter what comes through your filter as a child, whether it's trauma A, trauma B, trauma C, it's gonna trigger the same thing in you because it's who you are, the way that you're wired. So my thing is you've got three kids who go through the same home mm -hmm. and they all come out with very different perspectives and it affects them in very different ways. And it's because they see the world differently from birth. Okay. And okay. so they're taking things in through their numbers filter and it triggers different things in them based on their number. So for example, you know, a two might experience, you know, a neglectful parent mm -hmm. and say that I'm unworthy of love. An eight might experience a neglectful parent and say, you know, I'm never going to, um, I'll, I'm never going to do that to my kids because I'm going to rise above it. I'm going to read every book. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to not be affected by this. Okay. And so they just see it differently. It's like how, you, yeah, it's true. You can see kids from all the same household and, you know, they turn out so differently. Yeah. I don't want to, speaking of neglect, I don't want to neglect number the, nine. Uh, oh, the, yeah. The last okay. one. Yeah. Um, so what, what's sort of like cornerstone in the nine's life? So the nine is very, they would like to avoid conflict pretty much at all costs. Okay. So Harmonizer. they are kind of described as like the anger that went to sleep kind of. They're just, they're carrying it like we all are, but. They would have, they will avoid conflict at all costs. The nines would like to do that. Okay, so like diplomatic, easygoing. Mm -hmm. So they will take on, um, they will kind of morph if they need to, to, to keep everything running smoothly. Okay. You guys, I did not look at the time at all. I have no idea. I got so. I didn't start the clock. I got so immersed, <laughs> so engrossed, so we should probably take obsessed a break. Okay. with this. We will take a quick break and then we're going to talk more about the specifics of Enneagram when we come back in the second segment of Second Shot. He makes up words, she translates them. Heath and Jenny host more of Second Shot, coming up on RNCN.
You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share it with your people and I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Go pick it up today. Ready? Aim. Fire. Second shot is back for another round on RNCN. Okay, so that was like the quickest Enneagram summary we could have done. So I just want to make it clear to everybody that that uh, you know this is really deep. There are so many online quizzes, and I think what's good about an online quiz for something like this is it raises awareness about the possibility that you right. could even take a test like this. But then it goes a little deeper. There's the app that um, that Miranda said was sort of it's, it's like not I- ideal. It's not the best way, but it's called Know Your Type, and it's a little bit it's better a than great. The, it has the quizzes, so right? much information though. Okay. Yeah, it's and great. This is how Heath and I thought we found our types, and then thought we found our types, and then thought we found our types, and are still searching. For but I w- it's common to not find your type quickly. Okay. Does that okay? So if you don't find it quickly, does that mean that you're disconnected from who you are, or like what? What does that mean? No, I mean I think it's like um, like anything. Like if you go um, to Disney World for the first time, well, Disney World's huge, and you're like, where do I go first? Mm-hmm. What do I do? Everything looks fun, right? Well, once you've been and you got it, you get the big picture under your belt. Okay. Okay, same thing. You look at the Enneagram, there's nine types, there's all this information, and it's like, yeah, all of it sounds really great. What, you know, but once you kind of get your head around the options and you get the big picture, it's a lot easier then to identify one way. But it doesn't necessarily mean you have no self-awareness if you can't right. figure out okay. your type. No. Some of these online will have little like tests and quizzes mm-hmm. um, to help you figure it out. But like you said, those aren't always the most accurate. So what is the most accurate? If somebody was like, I want to go all in on this, i got to know. Yeah. So some of the online tests will give you like a range. Yeah. So it'll tell you like you answered the most answers were two related. The, the next were threes. Then the next were sevens. That's a good place to start, yeah. but I would not do that and say, I'm a two, it, it was gotcha. the most answers. You know, It's a good place to dig in, meaning there's resources online. The Enneagram Institute is a great website to go to that has okay. so much information. It has everything from you know, all the types in detail to you can even enter two types and it'll tell you how those two types are in a relationship. Like the strengths and weaknesses, it's awesome. Uh-oh. Oh. So that's a great resource to, oh, no. to use. So, and then those you you shared a couple of books with me that you said that if we get more interested in it, yes. and I can bring those back so that I can tell the titles or whatever too. Yeah. Um, so, um, I would say a good starter book, like just generalize all nine types, would be The Road Back to You, and that's by Ian Morgan Cron and Suzanne Stabile, who both have great podcasts as well. Awesome. Oh. Okay. Good. We love to share hey. like news about other podcasts too. Yes, so very they cool. have great podcasts. Typology is one of them, and The Enneagram Journey is one, and they're phenomenal. So they interview people. So you can go on there and say like, oh, they're interviewing an eight. I'm going to listen to this and see if I pick up on anything oh. that makes me think that this might be me. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's okay, really well, fun. Maybe that's how I'll figure it out. So why would somebody, what is the benefit in this? Why, why would somebody want to go on this personal journey of figuring out what their number is? Okay, so I think there's a lot to be said about personality testing because we've all done it. We've all used it. Workplaces use it. And the way the Enneagram stands out above the rest, in my opinion, is that it follows up. It doesn't just say, you know, well, this is what you're inclined to do, and this is what she's inclined to do, and you can figure out how to work better together that way. But it tells you the reason you're inclined to do it, and it will give you, if you have resources, it gives you literal exercises, things that you should be doing to soften the things that you tend to do in overdrive. Okay. And so, and then once you know it, like once you, because you can know about the Enneagram and be like, oh, fun. But once the Enneagram like really zings you, like you'll know, because you're like, you're into it. I mean, you want more of it. You see the value. Once you do that, then that's where you get, that's where you get into like, once you realize who you really are, you cannot unknow that. And so you take that into all of your interactions every day. Is it hard for you to like meet new people because you're analyzing them? 
Um, or like Enneagram typing them. Yeah, well, it is hard <laughs> once you have an understanding. But even my husband's enjoyed this a lot. And he does not do, his wheelhouse is nothing like mine as far as self-development and things like that. But uh-huh. even he has started saying like, oh, I met someone today and I think they're a two. Or, but he's starting to pick up on it. But it's so helpful. How is it, how can we use this as a tool as parents? Um, like if in trying to identify uh, our, our children's types. Okay, so um, this is the part where it can get tricky because you don't ever want to put a type on someone, but this is this is the value I see in having a coach or a communication specialist or someone help you if okay. you're not um, if you haven't read all the books and really have a good understanding of it because if you mistype your child and you're parenting them on the wrong things, it's not doing them any good. Okay. Necessarily. But it can be such a positive tool for your marriage as well as parenting. And it can just bring the whole family into a better communication style and a better dynamic by understanding each other. Don't you guys wish that like all the workplaces would do this? Well, I was going to yeah. say, so, like you said earlier, some do things kind of like this, but those are basic, those are very like effect based. Right. Here's you here's the things you're prone to do they don't explain why they don't go into the cause right they don't explain like here's why you perceive the world the way you do you're right i do wish more places did this Uh, that would be that would be very insightful and when you know what your struggle is you practice it more you know like i know i'm not good at being vulnerable because i learned at an early age like if i want things done i've got to do it like it's on me and so I have to soften that part of myself and realize how it hinders my relationships. And so I have to practice, you know, if I have a need, I can express that to a friend. It's okay to, you know, need support or need someone. Has this changed your marriage? Very much. Yeah. Very much. How so? Explain that. Um, I would say, um, so my husband and I, he's a three, I'm an eight. They're both in the competency triad, meaning like competent as heck. Like we Mm -hmm. get stuff done. But, I mean, he's disconnected from feelings because he is so productive and on it and does everything. Well, I'm disconnected from feelings because I am in charge and I got to be strong and I'm the mom and I run the show. Okay. And so if you're not, if you don't really put an effort and an intentionality on your marriage in getting underneath that, you can really miss needs that aren't met that you don't realize that aren't met until one day, you know, it's going to catch up with you one day. Okay. Like someday you're going to hit a wall and be like, this is not working for me anymore. Like I feel depleted. I don't feel valued. I don't feel accepted. I don't feel loved. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Heath and I need to figure out our types (laughs) straight away. I think it's interesting on the app. It talks about the famous people. Mm -hmm. Um, (coughs) Excuse me. So like the famous ones, Jerry Seinfeld, Gandhi, and Hillary Clinton. Yep. So so listen to these as we're going through and maybe our listeners will be like, oh yeah, I'm totally Gandhi. Yeah. Obviously a one or, Makes you know, sense. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, twos, Gloria Estefan, Sally Field. Um, threes, Tom Cruise, Oprah Winfrey, Kobe Bryant. Okay. Fours, Johnny Depp, Princess Diana, and Anthony Hopkins. I knew it. I was always Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. Totally. <laughs> so Anthony Hopkins? Oh, no. <laughs> well, it's like, and it's funny because we have, the, we have the outer, you know, perception of these people. We don't know them internally. Yeah. But it is kind of interesting to see, like, oh, okay. It's true. Um, fives, Bill Gates, Laura Bush, and Prince Charles. Oh, I want to be a five. <laughs> okay. So sixes, um, Richard Branson, George H.W. Bush, um, and Woody Allen. Sevens, Howard Stern, Bill Clinton, and John F. Kennedy. Eights, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Donald Trump, and Rosie O'Donnell. Ooh, that's embarrassing <laughs> to be in that group. <laughs> <laughs> and Miranda Kerr. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's an odd one. It's, a tough, it's a tough type, I'm telling you. Um, famous nines, Walter Cronkite, Dalai Lama, and Dwight D. Eisenhower. So that's just, I just wanted to read those. Right. Those are fun. fun yeah. Because it's interesting to think about like, oh, you know, maybe I'm Oprah. Yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, and we don't know what these people are like in their private lives, like I said. So what do you say? What, what's the first step somebody should take if they're interested in delving further into this, either for them themselves or their spouse or their mm-hmm. business? Mm-hmm. Um, what should they do? So, um, I mean, of course, my first step would be to find someone that is trained and that specializes in it. They can help you walk through it because it is a lot. It's a lot of information. It is complex. 
and um but the best first step is to read okay read try to figure out your type but if you want to start applying it to your life and applying it to your relationships it is best to have a coach that is trained in the enneagram and certified so that they can because to apply it and know how to use it and know how to um you know see it in someone else and how Mm -hmm. that affects your type like that takes a pretty that's pretty complex like it's like doing the blood type diet but not knowing your blood type yeah i mean it's pretty complex (laughs) you don't yeah you don't want to do go go down the wrong path (laughs) right and i mean the enneagram is so great because you know whether you're talking about therapy or coaching um they're very different but you know they're both wonderful and it's it can take you like what you get done what you get discovered in like five sessions you can get to that in like session one with the Enneagram. I'm all about efficiency. Yes, it is. It does make things right? it like <laughs> propels you faster because of so knowing so much about someone. As our podcast expert on Enneagrams here, where exactly do you land on people like WebMDing their, their own en- en- Enneagrams? Being like, I, I looked online and I think I'm at this. Like, I guess you're cool with it, right? Because ultimately they're learning and they're reading and that's better than doing nothing at all. Oh, but, totally. And yeah. you know, only you know your type. I mean, I can have a good idea, but I can't tell you like you're dead wrong. That's not your type. Right. You know, only you know what you, when you read the words, only you know if that is resonates with you deep, deep down. And like you said, there's ability to flex out a little bit. You have the ones next to your numbers that are kind of close. I yeah. thought it was cool that we were talking about eights that are close to seven and sevens yeah. are inherently uh, negative or eights are inherently positive, but both look at all situations. That's like the linking thing. So like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And the good news is, I mean, you figure this out and then you use your awareness to soften the things about and use your knowledge of all the types to take on what you like what you admire from other types well and yeah i guess if i understand this correctly like you are once you find your type or you know once you figure out your type Mm -hmm. that is your personality from beginning to end is that is that what i'm like you can't say i'm a type two but i really wish i was a type five (laughs) so i'm going to work on trying to become this person like you're always going to have this stuff in the background that you're that you're either having to suppress or yes. uh, you know work against in some way where i mean are you more successful by just uh understanding those things and saying okay i understand that i'm this type that's not going to change so what i'm going to do is just try to uh decrease my negatives and and focus on the things that i am good at is that exactly. is that more efficient oh that's exactly right and psychology says i mean you can rewire your brain uh, one example is so so as an eight eights view uh, anger is energy to get off so usually mm-hmm. like a hot temper like you know explode mad and then be like I'm done and when they're done like it's really over there's no residual nothing carried forward like it's just oh sorry you know but you get to a place where you realize this isn't working for me this is I'm in my eight in overdrive how am I going to soften my anger just because it's my number does not make it okay you cannot say like well i'm an eight so just get deal with it that's right. who i am okay. it's like no 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 the point is to you can replace that that negative behavior with a positive one okay. but you can only do that through being familiar with it and being familiar with the uprise of that anger so when i feel it coming up i'm like okay there it is i'm gonna move <laughs> it to the side and i'm gonna replace it with a desired behavior but it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of work Oh, Miranda, you are so awesome. I'm loving this discussion. Um, I want to, gosh, I could go on and on and on with this, but we will be back for the third segment of Second Shot. Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Heath and Jenny still to come. To all my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code Second Shot. Now listen, promo code Second Shot, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal, and go do it right now. Energyogre.com. Dot com promo code second shot in a free month thanks go get it now run kick off your boots or suit up the choice is yours welcome back to second shot on rncn 
Okay, it wouldn't be second shot, as Zach just mentioned, without actually doing a headline. Yes. So we had to, you know, pull a news headline. It's actually one that Miranda sent to us. So we thought it would be perfect to kind of um, chat through this one. So, Zach, take it away. Yes, from Inc.com. Uh, two things. One, Mark Zuckerberg has a sister named Randy Zuckerberg. <laughs> so if you didn't know that, now you know. Uh, and you two, Randy Zuckerberg is an entrepreneur like Mark. And uh, one of the things she tweeted recently was the entrepreneur's dilemma. She said, maintaining friendships, building a great company, spending time with family, staying fit, and getting sleep. Pick three. I love pick threes. So I'll roll through them real quick again, just okay. so we all have Okay, them. yeah, yeah, all yeah. Right. One, maintaining friendships. Two, building a company. Three, spending time with your family. Four, staying fit. And five, getting sleep. Friendships, company, family, fitness, sleep. Pick three. I love it. Oh, I hate it. I love it. So I hate it. It's so hard. hard. It's, it's not enough time. It. It's because you are not a mother. That's right. Yeah. It's oh, because it's true. you're not. I'm just kidding. I, I, oh, I, I believe I'm you. I'm totally yeah. kidding. I'm totally kidding. We all have our, our things going on in our lives. So what do you pick, Miranda? If you, it, like, like, what do you think are your three? And, and what do you think you wish were your three if they're okay. different? Okay. Well, I can say um, I've had a major, you know, shift in life recently with the starting my own coaching practice. Mm -hmm. And so... For 11 years, I was a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. And so I was family, you know, family, fitness, and sleep. Mm -hmm. That's what I was. It was easy. I didn't miss a workout. I loved it. It was no problem. Well, now at this phase of life, I'm work, family, because family is a given for me. And right. then so family, work, and I mean sleep, because I, I, me personally, <laughs> cannot function on four hours of sleep like I you did. I don't know if I was thriving. I was just functioning. <laughs> yeah. And so at this point in my life, fitness has fallen off big mm -hmm. time. And so, um, so yeah, I'm, I need a way to f figure out how to how to shift things around to make it a priority again. It's hard. Well, and it's hard to think about. I, I like this because it does make us think about like, we think, oh, well, I wish I was doing this. But but if you w really wished it that much, you would just do it. Yeah. Right? Like you would. But then it's like, okay, but this career, as you're launching this business and you spent all this time um, getting these certifications and working with clients and mm -hmm. stuff, like it, it has to be your priority because that's yeah. what you're building. And it's, it's what, what I it, love. Yeah. It's what I want to be doing. But <sighs> I mean, I will say it's overlapped with my stay-at-home mom you know, role, uh -huh. that is ending because my littlest one starts kindergarten in August. And so that was kind of my plan is to finish all this and be rolling by the time she goes to school to have mm -hmm. something, you know, and it's overlapped by about, you know, nine months. So that's been, so I know it's only a matter of time. Margin's going to open up soon. And so I just have You're to You're going to have that chunk of time. Yeah. So. <laughs> Zach, what are, what are your three? Well, you make a good point. Where you're at in life makes a difference. Like what stage of life you're yeah. at. And I am not currently a parent. So it's difficult for me to lean on spending time with family. My one other real family is Christine, of course, my fiance. And she yes. is also Shout like my, Christine. she's also like my best friend. So I'd love to push her into maintaining friendships, but that's family. So <laughs> I should say mine right now, my priorities are probably maintaining friendships, building a great company and spending time with family relationships and work, which is not great. But when it comes to fitness, I'm like, I don't get sick. I never have to go to the doctor. Zach, because I'm one you of the youth. 20 yeah, it's years right. old. 27 years old, yeah. yeah. And I'm great. And then getting sleep, I actually do a lot and lean on. But for the purposes of this, I'll just say those first three, it's fine. So, yeah. That's where I'm at. Yes. What about you, Matt? Uh, I think I would probably fall into the friends family which uh, by family i also consider that to be alone time like just <laughs> like time okay. at my house like not family, around as in everyone get out family <laughs> as in me i'm like i am my own family right. um and I love you and <laughs> so then much. and then funny. sleep probably because i i tend to just need it um so yeah it's probably friends family and sleep is, <laughs> is where I'm at sleep, right Because, again, I don't want to be hanging out with all right. of you right. yeah. after like I podcast it all day. If I can just get away from everybody and go to sleep for a while, I'll be, I'll be good. Call that sleep family time, too. Just roll right. it all roll in. It, all it happens one. at home. <laughs> yeah. It happens at home. Oh, that's it happens so funny. Home. Gosh, this one's hard. I, I've been, I'd been, you know, knowing we were going to discuss this and trying to think about, like, what are, what am I really doing? Like, what am I really prioritizing? And I would say family definitely my current schedule allows for a lot of time with family which I love and I, I didn't have as much of before so that's nice and then I would say work business you know like building this podcast working on hot works which I've talked about before with you guys mm -hmm. um, working on other like hosting MC type projects and you know video projects things like that that's a priority to me so like at first I was thinking friends because I, I do for a, you know a mom I think I spend a decent amount of time with my girlfriends but if 
I get an email and it's like a girl's luncheon versus can you host this video project for us? Like I'm picking the work. Mm -hmm. I love my girlfriends and I think it's important, but I'm definitely picking the work. I mean, you know, you got to yeah. you got to work, right? Um, and then sleep. For the first time in my life, sleep is on my top three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, like I, I've been sleeping, knock on wood, for... I mean, seven hours a night. Really? It's well, that's crazy. huge. No way. It's crazy. It I know. Crazy. Like, I don't even. I thought I was gonna be. I thought I was gonna feel better, actually. But I kind of feel. I feel like a little <laughs> bit more well rested. <laughs> but I thought I would be even more energetic. But anyway, I think those are my three. And fitness is still. I, I do some sort of movement every day. Sometimes that's like walking Brighton around. Sometimes it's chasing her around. Sometimes it's a full on workout. I do the every day. But I mean, fitness in the way that before, like I was like logging meals. No. I was doing the most intense workouts mm -hmm. and yeah. like really more regimented with um, that whole like fitness structure. So anyway, Jenny, nobody cares about your whole personal routine, <laughs> <laughs> but this is it. I, I, think, um, I think people care immensely about your so, whole personal routine. But, um, so, so I would say that like it's not in my top three because I'm not planning out every single meal and like when Heath says do you want to order favor I'm like heck yes sure. I do yeah um, whereas like that would not have been a part of my repertoire a couple of years ago so you know there's my top three family work and sleep it's funny I was gonna, the same three I was yeah, gonna I was, I was gonna call you out on the friendships thing because I remember a while back you and Heath stopped talking about on the podcast how you guys had to decide between the house and Brighton and work and the podcast and everything, you're like, we gotta, we gotta do friends like one night a week. We cut we our friends out. And that's what I mean. Like you're able to, to be like, listen, there is still important to me, but like these are my priorities. That's something you're able to do. I'm still figuring it out. Um, you so yeah. will, it, you get forced into prioritizing yeah. though yeah. when you have, uh, you know, children. Yeah. I just, you know, because y y you're gonna miss stuff if you're out every night. Right, not, not forced like, yeah. Well, For, like, no, I mean, I mean obliged. it in a positive, yeah, right. I mean it in a you, positive you want way. Yeah, well, and I think course. that article is not necessarily saying you can't have these right. other things. <laughs> right. Like you can only have ever three and you have no friends otherwise. But it's more like, yeah, when you when it comes down to a choice that you have to make, um, are you choosing to go out with your friends mm -hmm. or are you choosing like some yeah. other priority? Are you choosing to spend time with your family? Are you choosing to, you know, go hide in the bedroom and sleep or whatever like that? <laughs> um, so, which sounds like Someone's a really destructive, an destructive behavior. Hmm. But um, yeah, so I, I think it's just worth noting that like it's not about not having any of that. It's just about saying when it really comes down to it, what are what is the thing I'm going to choose? Wait, when when Matt said that he his family time was actually time with himself, <laughs> did that give you a better clue about was, what type was, he might my be? My wheels were turning, I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. All right, I'd love to hear what that means. Yeah, yeah. well, there's a couple types that okay. that could be. No, that's <laughs> real. Um, I love it. I think, too, with this, with this thing is you can do all those things, but it's kind of that quality versus quantity mm -hmm. thing. Like, how well are you going to do them if you try to fit all five in yeah. mm -hmm. or whatever they are, like however many there are. Yeah. And, that's, and that's what surprises me about this. Uh, I, I'm not an entrepreneur, so I don't really understand the entrepreneur's dilemma. But the way I see it, entrepreneurs are the kind of people who look at society, they look at capitalism, and they say, no, 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 I want to do it this way. I'm going to swim against the, against yeah, yeah, the stream. Yeah. Yeah. So it's weird to me to hear Randy Zuckerberg say, all entrepreneurs land in this category. If anything, I'd say entrepreneurs are the people trying to pick four. They're mm -hmm. the ones trying to go one step beyond and mm -hmm. say, this isn't right. enough for me. I want more. So it's weird that she's like, just three are entrepreneurs. What does that make the rest of us? I don't know. But, right. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I think it works for everybody. I, I just wrote a blog post a couple days ago or earlier this week um, about, it was like titled, an apology oh, to all so the good. moms yeah. I've trained. Oh, yes. I loved it. Oh, it was my so gosh. funny. I, I, like I trained these moms, you know, for 13 years prior to having a child of my own. And I was, you know, like I felt like my gift was to really empower them. And, and when they came to me, give them all my energy and, and really try to like feed into them that you can do it. And like, if you have this goal, you have this thing you want to do, whether the goal is doing a 5k or a half marathon or a certain fitness goal, or, you know, they wanted to like, whatever, maybe it was an aesthetic goal. Um, maybe it was like, they wanted to, you know, just be healthy for their kids, whatever it was. I was like, you can do it. And like, you have to make your workouts and prioritize this and make this like an appointment that you would never miss and, and do this like you brush your teeth. And then I became a mom myself and I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness, I am so sorry. <laughs> like it doesn't work like that. Right. So, so it was just, I, I was well-intentioned, but I didn't realize that, that instead I needed to be empowering them with ideas of like, okay, here's how you can sneak in a workout in the afternoon. Or like, here's how you can give yourself a break and maybe restore and maybe you need a bath. Like not like you're dirty, but just like you need to relax, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, so anyway, you know, you just kind of learn, I think as life evolves, um, what different priorities are in different phases. Classic type eight. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait, what? I don't have, I don't have a punchline for oh, that. Oh, yeah. I just, yeah. Like, no. Uh, was I from, there? from no. what you were talking about, trying to encourage, and, and Miranda, please stop me when I when I just steer this car right off the road. But like uh, empowering other people and taking that positivity and being like, you can find the time. You can do it. Giving your energy to others. Wasn't that the Energizer? Oh, yeah. Isn't that the That's isn't the, that the seven. That's the seven. seven. Excuse me. Oh, no. Yeah. Which is. You guys, uh, I'm having an Enneagram identity crisis. <laughs> no, but it's important yeah, to it's note that sometimes the ones that strike you the most in in, in a way you might not like, mm -hmm. that's, that's your oftentimes one. the one you should really, really look at before moving on. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys, I'm about to do a deep, deep dive, get really deep dive into you know, the personal. number seven. Um, I will be in the, whenever I find out what I am, I will share it with you in the Facebook group. Um, you know, so that everybody can, you know, analyze it. And I'll try to put up the resources for, you know, the website and the, yeah. the app and everything like that. Um, so if you want to read that blog post of your mom and want my apology, it's at JennyAndChondo.com. Miranda, where can everybody find you if they're looking for coaching or um, some guidance for themselves or their companies in terms of Enneagram? Okay, I'm on Facebook page and Instagram, both at Miranda Kirk Coaching. Um, it's M A R. I'm glad important that you to know that out. Yeah. Yes. And I have a website as well and it's M it's just my name Miranda Kirk at, uh, dot com, but it's M A R again. So that's where you can find a lot of information. Awesome. Thank you. You were so good. Yeah, thanks. thanks. I'm so grateful that you guys had me on. I Aww. loved it. Uh, at Apple Zackintosh on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash group slash second shot. What's your Enneagram? What's your type? Chime in. We want to hear. Yeah. Uh, you can find me Matt Stoker one on Instagram, and I've been loving reading everybody's life hacks from. Yes, this past oh week. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. The that life fun. hacks have been fun. You guys, let's do Heath a solid since he skipped out on us today. And oh, I don't know how that thing called work. Well, let's leave a rating, a review for the podcast, and uh, give him a shout out. So when he comes back, he's excited about that. And we will see you in the Facebook page. See you next time, guys. <laughs> Thank you.